I've struggled with being a active reader for most of my adult life. It's something where I've had to come up with strategies for enjoying reading and then staying on that journey. Always been more of a TV and movies guy, but just in the past couple of years, I've I've tried to work on that muscle. And I would say I made started making progress when I got on the Ryan Holiday train. And, and he talks about this often, which is just once you find the one writer you like, just plumb their entire uh, works, go through all the things that they have written and just keep pushing with that one author because you've at least got that bond of trust. You at least know that they can deliver and you're not going to get 30 pages into a book and board, which happens to me. A lot. So when I was a kid, uh, when I was very young, uh, I would, the, the church that we were going to as a family uh, had a, a small library um, that was uh, sort of downstairs in the same building that they had the Sunday school classes. And I would skip the Sunday school class and go and read uh, the books that were down there, particularly the uh, beautifully illustrated uh, green cover edition of The Hobbit which uh, I'm sure many uh, of your listeners are familiar with. Uh, and I would just sit under a desk and read that book and as opposed to, to going and going to Sunday school. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can, but, uh, you can judge that as you will. But what came from that, of course, is that, you know, I read that and then I read C.S. Lewis and then I read the Space Trilogy and then I read the, um, you know, I said, you know, where do I go from here? And you go for, to... Uh, Lloyd Alexander, and you go to, you know, the Darkest Rising books. And then you, from my perspective, it, I think it's kind of a natural uh, thing to end up in the sort of sci-fi horror genre and kind of start picking up stuff that's along those things. Because the fantasy, at least the adult fantasy genre, was, it just seemed like it was a smaller portion of the book, uh, you know, landscape then yeah. than it is now, you know, it, that... Um, and so what I really started doing was, I mean, I think I was, you know, 10 or 11 when I started reading Stephen King. And I probably read, you know, virtually everything that was available from that perspective in the in the early to mid 90s. Um, and uh, so that was really kind of more the 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 thing that I plumbed. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I moved on to Tom Wolf and to, you know, the uh, you know more grown up more teenage stuff, Walker, Percy and the like, uh, as I got older. But the, the thing that I, you know, sort of still love is I love to have kind of a, a, a an intelligent quote unquote. I mean, I think this is unfair, you know, the kind of book that, that, uh, uh, you know, is going to show up on those lists, uh, fiction work, um, occasionally, but then I like to go back to stuff. That's just a higher form of, of pulp, you know, the, the, detective fiction that I mentioned right. earlier, you know, Ross McDonald and, uh, uh, and Dashiell Hammett, obviously. And, you know, the, the whole kind of, uh, approach that is used by a lot of those California writers that are, you know, writing through kind of the, the mid century period, uh, is stuff that I really enjoy. And it's, you know, it has, it has a lot of tropes in it. It has a lot of things that are cliches now, but they're cliches because they, wrote them originally you know and so uh and so you have to appreciate that and then you know a lot of the sci-fi kind of pulpy stuff you know i really appreciate and i think part of that is a recognition that you know if you go back to the this quote-unquote classics you know there's there is really not something more pulpy than the count of monte cristo like it is one of the most pulpy kind of books that and you read that at least what I when you read say it, you know, pulpy, you, you mean kind of like archetypal like, well, and like everything is, you know, <laughs> but like there's there's, you know, there's a character in it who literally was buried alive as a child in the backyard. And then the person who was spying on the person burying them, dug them up and then raised them as their own child. <laughs> like that's a subplot. Spoiler alert for the Count of Monte Cristo, you know, as, as a book. And you start to understand, oh, this is a serial. This is their equivalent of a comic book. You know, it's not like uh, it's not uh, something that you have to put on the same threshold as like high art. Okay. Um, this is kind of silly. Yeah, that, that makes that makes plenty of sense. Thank you.